Well, we're going to talk about... Thank you uh, very much. <laughs> Here we go. Ah. Thank you very much. Someone gave Yanka some mic. Spoiler alert, we are going to talk to him in just a bit. They're just getting uh, set up there. But we are going to break down the second game in the series and H2K closing it out, starting by taking a look at the second 10 ban system here that we saw uh, in the European LCS. And you wanted to focus primarily all on what went to top and what went to the jungle. Yeah, I just want to talk a little bit about like role distribution here because I think what blocked Origin and really locked them in the first game is that they had a tank top and a tank in a jungle, which really makes like the map not dynamic at all. Mm -hmm. Everybody's just kind of like stuck there and you're hoping to scale. The second game, they had like ag aggression in the top lane with the rumble, but having wisdom on the tank. The inverse was there for H2K. They had their aggressive player in the jungle with Jankos and then they had a tank top. I think it's a much, it's a better composition to, to kind of play the game aggressively and have more options. And I definitely think with this draft, Origin could have uh, won the game and done more, so I definitely liked it a lot more from them. They certainly did, and when you look across the draft that we had, like, the Misfortune coming out as a counter pick to the Xander, we thought already that's a great bottom lane now for the Origin. In the mid lane, it's still you kind of lose the early push against the Syndra as an Echo, but things get better over time. Because of your insane mobility, it's not as easy for the Syndra to be as aggressive. So this time Origin weren't necessarily going to get pushed in perma all the time, but some early game mistakes really made things difficult for them. And this is why we actually really want to highlight this first replay that's coming on. Uh, because Origin in their draft had basically had two pushing lanes. They had a Rumble beating the Maokai in terms of push, and then they had the Misfortune, the notorious counter pick against the Zyra on paper pushing the misfortune lane in, uh, the Zyra lane in. However, if you uh, highlight the first replay here, it's another unfortunate mistake. And we don't we don't highlight this replay to blame Hiva because it's a synergy issue. Basically, Hiva and Tabs are not on the same line as the minions come. He gets a Tun Lord Spark and a poke from Ash, which yields the pressure. And at that point, Hiva loses the pressure in the lane. And why it's so important for bot lane is when you're playing poke versus poke, whoever is pushing has an easier time. So whenever the enemy AD carry walks up for a predictable movement, like going for a lost hit, for example, he'll eat poke from the enemy lane. And that's what happened there. Tabs was con continuously under pressure. Hiva could never harass with the, with the uh, storm of bullets. I keep forgetting what it's called, you know, but he was oh, under pressure. Yeah. What's make it rain. Make it rain. Yeah. Yes, why is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he couldn't use make it rain aggressively. And that's because he walked up slightly a bit too far at level one and his AD carry didn't protect him. And from that point, Origin lost the one pushing lane they had in their draft. So like, the duck is, is looking at all this, two pushing lanes, we can get the pressure, we can get it flowing around. Wisdom is a good pathing jungler with the Rek'Sai, and it all falls down from that one single mistake, and their early game was already on the back foot. But it's not all bad news for Origin, because there were some highlight moments throughout the game. They did manage to come back in a couple of plays. They were able to steal away the Baron, and they still showed glimmers of hope throughout the game. So even though they still fell behind, they're still showing a lot of individual micro mistakes, I still have a bit of optimism for the team, and I still think that there's room for growth. This, this wasn't a, a walkover by any means. There were signs of hope, so we'll see what happens there. But for now, Dracos is standing by on stage with our player of the series. Let's hear what he has to say. Thank you very much, Shox. Of course, I am here joined by Yankos after his first series, new best of three format. A lot of things on your mind, but my first question for you, man, is what happened in that game two? It got really messy really quick. Well... I think the biggest swing was the fact that we let them steal the Nasher. And we knew, we, I have no smite, but we still wanted to try a burst. The thing about our team, though, is that we still don't have the perfect communication you need in the LCS. So when we said burst the Nasher right now, and I will W echo over the wall, it worked kind of unlucky. And then, you know, we were trolling, and they just got the Nash. So we had to stall a little bit more, and then Hopefully, you know, uh, account for the mistakes which happened. Rex, I got caught a little bit, you know, he was trolling a little bit, so it was easy. I mean, fine. <laughs> it wasn't easy, let's be honest, it was fine. But, okay, so in the end, you brought up your new team. You've got three new members who have been, of course, kind of returning after a long time spent on Fnatic, but two new Korean players as well. Do you feel like your team is stronger right now than H2K last season? Uh, how does it really compare? I think that H2K 2016 World Finals would probably win with currently, current H2K. But the thing is that we didn't get a lot of practice just yet. I mean, two weeks is not enough to basically be flawless in communication like we were last year and stuff like this. So I think at this very moment, we are fine, but we can still improve a lot. And it's shown in the games against Origin, which, you know, they weren't the best games. Uh, that wasn't the best league, you know, everyone probably saw before. But, I mean, it, it's fine, you know, it, it's great. 
Okay, so looking forward, of course, you guys are playing two games this week. Your next game on Saturday will be versus Splice, uh, another team kind of expected to do well within your group. What are your expectations for that match, uh, given that you were kind of struggling in this series? Uh, well, this is a tough question because we actually didn't scream Splice before. You know, we had some screams against Origin, so we knew what to expect. When it comes to Splice, I respect their team a lot. I think they um, are amazing players. They are all young. Yamato Kano is a great coach. So it's going to be a rough match. I think we, we will prepare some pick and ban, and I think we can win. But we need to step up our game a little bit more. And um, the question is if Splice will be proactive or like more passive. Because even though we had like not the best jungle matchup early game uh, against the um, Giants, I mean against Origin, they weren't really punishing us that much, you know. But at some point when we were the team that, you know, had to punish opponents, we didn't punish them either. So it feels like if Splice can step up the game and they can actually punish the mistakes that we would make, it's going to be very, very hard, hard game. But at this very moment, I can say that we should be able to win at least one game and we'll try our best, homie. Homie. All right, I Homie. like it. Oh, way to close. We're doing the pulling off of the mic, too. Well, that's enough of me, enough from Yanko. It's good to hear your thoughts on the teams and the series coming up. But when we get back, it's going to be the match of the week, G2 and Fnatic heading on to the Rift. So don't go anywhere. It's just a short break. Fnatic will get shield.